Welcome along to Point Blank Music School here in London. Uh, my name's Luke Hopper and I'm joined today in the studio by the very, talent, very talented JC uh, for this week's instalment of Friday Forum Live. So uh, for those of you who uh, haven't tuned in before, who are new to Friday Forum, this is your chance to uh, find out a bit more about what we do here at Point Blank. Oh, one second. Find out a bit more about what we do here at Point Blank and to ask any questions that you have. If you, um, you know, want to know about any courses or if you want to know anything more on the technical side about production or um, mastering or mixing, etc., then that's what JC is here for. Um, so yeah, JC is here to talk to us a little bit about loudness yeah, today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, just before that, uh, I should mention that, that this week's Friday Forum is actually the very last of the year. Uh, it's obviously a very sad yeah. day for us, but uh, it's the very last Friday Forum of the year. Um, but luckily, all of the sessions throughout the whole year are fully archived on the YouTube channel. So if you head to um, youtube.com forward slash point blank online, you'll find all of the archive sessions uh, that you can check out there. And also, if you stay locked onto the Facebook page, which is facebook.com uh, forward slash point blank college, you'll be able to see that each Friday we'll post up uh, some of our favourite Friday forums, uh, judging by you know, the, the most kind of views they've got and you know, the best reactions. So uh, yeah, each week you'll be able to tune in and see us um, in action again. Um, also, I should mention that again on the Facebook page, you can um, still download our free uh, Ableton Live reverse reverb plugin. Um, that one, a Max for Live plugin created by Dan Herbert for us. Um, and also, you can also um, subscribe to our YouTube channel to be in with the chance of winning a pair of Pioneer HDJ 1000 headphones. Uh, if you head to the blog, the Point Blank Plus, um, and you should see all the information there about how to enter the comp and what you can win. Um, and the final thing, uh, as we are kind of coming to the close of the year, the last chance to enrol for January courses um, is, is getting kind of upon us really. Uh, everything is filling up quite a lot. So if you do want to study with us, if you want to get in a course, head over to pointblankonline.net or pointblanklondon.com and uh, check it out. Uh, online courses enrolling um, as of the, the 7th of January and uh, the London courses another week after that. Um, so yeah, that's about it from me. Do get your questions into the chat room. Uh, myself and JC will try and run through everything we can um, before the end of the session. And yeah, I'll hand you over to JC and we'll learn a bit more about loudness. Cool. Thanks, Luke. Cool. Hi, everyone. So yeah, we, today we thought, you know, last session of the year, let's use a topic that, you know, is quite talked about in the, in the kind of mixing and mastering, and especially now that everybody tends to mix and master at home, mm -hmm. the thing about loudness and, you know, everybody's competing to, be, to, get, to grab the attention. And I think that's what is the key about loudness is the reason why loudness exists. It's because it's that everybody tends to believe, yeah, if my track is going to be louder than somebody else's track, I'm going to get more attention. People mm -hmm. are going to notice it more. Yep. Uh, which, you know, I think is a valid point. It is, yeah. It I mean, we turn valid... things up, they sound bad. You know what I mean? I mean? Yeah. It's a psychology, it's a psychoacoustic phenomenon, whatever you want to call it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's kind of like, put it a little bit louder. And yes, it grabs your attention. You feel that it's, it's got more power. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how it started, the whole world of loudness. And I think we maybe have touched on it already uh, in, in past sessions, that it's not only a new phenomenon, it's something that has always been going on, yeah. even with vinyl. Yeah. And it started with the uh, jukeboxes. Okay. Where, you know, people would be in the jukebox in a bar, you put a tune and people realize, oh, this one sounds louder. Oh, and right. that's how okay. the whole thing started. Okay. So that's why if you notice like old school Motown records were known to be extremely loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but on vinyl you had other consideration. It was about how much the length of the track that you put on the vinyl mm -hmm. and whether you've got a 12 inch, a 7 inch, mm -hmm. and whether you run at 45 or 33. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That would affect the, the, how loud you could cut a vinyl, okay. and it's still valid. You know, okay, every time yeah, you cut yeah, a vinyl, yeah. that's what uh, a remix, for example, are going to be on a 12 inch, so you can actually make it louder yeah, than yeah. you would on a 7 inch. You know okay. what I mean? Um, also, singles, uh, 7 inch singles were sounding louder than album tracks, because on an album you had to fit um, so much more on yeah, one yeah, side. Yeah. So that, that's kind of like those, those things about loudness, really, that uh, you, you need to be aware of. So that's been going on all the time, and it's still valid. Now, obviously, there's a lot of, you know, argument about 
is it a good thing, is it a bad thing, etc. So I think it has its place. And today what I want to try to bring, it just highlights some issues and why it's talked about, what it does to the audio, etc., etc. So that, that's kind of the vibe. And obviously now music, it's known that, you know, mix masters have been getting louder and louder. And the whole introduction of brick wall limiters really has been the start of a, a big jump in terms of loudness. If you listen to records from the 80s, the first CDs, everybody tends to agree that they sounded the best because mm -hmm. you couldn't. You were still very much in analog, although it was digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was no brick wall limiters that suddenly can stop your peaks. Mm -hmm. That means you can really increase and boost the whole, vo the whole volume of your mixes. So for, I've, I've taken a couple of examples from the 90s. Very quickly, uh, they're kind of big tunes, I guess. Uh, my volume here, gonna bring it down. So the first track is uh, the Nirvana Lithium uh, from Nevermind that was released early 90s. It's still a good reference because it was kind of like before things started to go overboard. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of loud. Obviously, the music is loud. That's part of the yeah. That's the, the nature. appeal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the nature of, of the of the band of the uh, of the track, the energy of the track. So let's have a listen. And what I've done is I put, I've brought up a lot of metering tools for you guys that. Uh, I want you to be aware, and I think these are tools, three meters, apart from the Doro meter that comes from Waves, is wa part of the Wave Mastering Bundle. Really good metering, displays the RMS and the peaks here. But also, there's this free metering, TT dynamic range meter. Um, and it gives you basically the meter in the middle, gives you the dynamic range. And the dynamic range is, is basically the difference between the lowest point in the track and the peaks and the highest and that gives you the kind of dynamic range a kind of a summary of your level of the track so that's an even a track and if you look you see See if we're going back here, and I'm going to really zoom on it just to illustrate the point. You can see here. Let's put. There's a lot of you know. There's, you mm. see the peaks. They're still there. The peaks are there. Mm. And really, the peaks. That's what's stopping you. As soon as you've got a peak hitting zero, that's it. You can't go louder. So, because it was less limited, you still have dynamic range. You've got the kick, the snares. You see the dynamic range very hefty. Around 10 dB dynamic range. Quite enough. The snare, you see the kick, the snare. And a lot of, you know, the problem now is that you, the more you're going to limit that, the only way you're going to be able to make it louder is basically by stopping that, make those quieter, hence bringing back the lowest level here, all the stuff in between, you're going to bring that up. So effectively, the argument is that nowadays, by using brick wall limiters and really making it really loud, stopping those peaks, what's going to happen to the snare and the kick? You're not going to have the peak, the transient, on the kick and the snare, and you, you're going to end up with a snare that is probably slightly less powerful because mm -hmm. you won't have the front, you know, the snap of it, which really defines the, the sound. Snare, yeah, yeah. And let's compare it now with, for me, it's an example of, I'm not going to talk about musically whether it's a good track or not, uh, but it's about an example to me of a track that once turned into MP3, and that's an MP3, is really starting to suffer. I'm hearing the distortion, and if you look here, same zoom that before, you see the peaks here. If I look at this track here, the peaks are a lot less. And the, the whole thing, the whole wave in the middle, the kind of RMS, has been boosted up a lot, a lot more. So now if you take that example, Back at it. let's see. Like Check out the dynamic range now. We're on 7 dB. This meter goes in the red. That means the dynamic range is considered there's none, hardly. You know what I mean? And the sound. You see the... The sound, it's been turned into MP3 and it's another consideration about loudness. Once it's turned into an MP3, mm -hmm. it gets worse. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I wanted to take that example because to me that you really hear how oh, it's distorting. I've got to say, I think, in my opinion, a really, really bad mm. master. But it is louder if you compare to the one before. It's louder, yeah. Yeah, it, it is louder, but is it better? You can't distinguish, you know, the elements in it. Exactly, all. you can't distinguish because you don't have the peaks anymore. Mm. You don't have all those transients that you need, you know, the breath mm -hmm. in the track. And I think that's what we need to be aware of. You know, uh, 
I personally think that we can have loud music and it has a place, it needs to be. I've been in a position that although I'm really about sound quality, I suppose, by nature. Mm -hmm. But I've had a couple of records, for example, cut at, at Abbey Road, uh, because we wanted that guy who, cut the, who was engineering for the Beatles and mastered some Radiohead albums. So we went and used him and mastered two albums with him. But the two times, the guy is really quite conservative on his label, and two right. times we had to go back because the artist was kind of like, it's quieter. You know, and even myself at home, I was putting it against other records, and I was kind of like, I know I shouldn't think like that, but... <laughs> I could do with a bit more. Just a little bit just more, a little yeah, bit more yeah. Because I got paranoid that people would think my record wasn't sounding as good. Yeah. You know, so I got caught into this cycle myself, even though I'm aware of the, you know, you can't help it. I think it's part of the stuff. So I think loudness has a place, but you need to be aware of when you go overboard. Mm -hmm. Like for me, oh, what has happened here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you need to be aware when you're going overboard, like, like it's, it's the case on that track, really. Mm -hmm. So that's. Do we have any questions so far? Uh, there's a couple, yeah. Um, we've got a question from uh, Shem Assault, who's asked, "What RMS level is the standard for today's music?" Okay, the standard nowadays we're we're probably think roughly about eight dB of dynamic range. It's not the RMS, but the kind of. Eight, and the even Nirvana six. track was on 10, right? Yeah, when the yeah. track was on 10. Okay. Uh, and not all the time. Yeah, there yeah, were yeah. parts where yeah. there, was, there was a lot more, you know. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, I think 10, 9 is acceptable. You still can get loud. You still can get some room. Uh, below that, I've, got, I've seen track going on to 6 dB. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the big, there was a big um, discussion when the Metallica Death Magnetic album came out. Right. The, literally, the, there was no dynamic. But, you know, also it didn't work because it's a guitar stuff. Mm. So you get those big guitars and it's already heavily compressed because distortion is a form of compression. Mm -hmm. You know, distortion compresses the sound. So I think that you've got to be aware that there, is, there are styles of music that can be pushed more than others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's about being aware of what you're doing, basically. You know, this track, the one we've played, the B.O.B., clearly too loud. Yeah. You know, they could have done with taking it off a couple of dBs less. It would have sounded better sonically. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, it's surprising how, how kind of clear it is when you're, when you're really kind of listening to yeah, it. Yeah, when you're starting to pay attention, yeah, you know. Yeah. And the key for me is that people need to be aware of is one of the reasons people like to have loud stuff it's because they think that on the radio it's going to sound better. Well, actually, it's the opposite. And it's going to sound worse, isn't it? Yeah. It's gonna, I'm going to demonstrate because what happens is on radio and at clubs, mm -hmm. you have limiters mm -hmm. for broadcasting. For club, it's to protect the speakers, yep. obviously, uh, from DJ, you know, DJs really pushing, right. the really game. Yeah, the games. Yeah. That's we're all you know. guilty of, definitely. You know, I mean, well, I'm sure, you know, fair enough, you know, you get carried away. Yeah. And, um, and for radio, it's the same. For transmitting, you need to protect it. So you're getting heavy limiting on top of it. So mm. imagine something heavily limited set into another heavy limiter, where are the transients, where are the peak? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. anything that gives you power in your music is probably going to, it's gone, mm -hmm. you know, and you end up with a bit of a mushy, yeah, yeah. you know, with no real impact. Yeah. So that, I hope it answers the question. Yeah, I think so. We've also got a um, question from Just To Get A Rep who's asked, um, can you explain um, what we're looking at on the meter, perhaps okay. cover the correlation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm going to so look at different type of meters. So here, for example, you're going to have two few things. You've got the peaks. So let me try. We're going to take another track now, a, a non-mastered one. Let's take that one, for example. That's a track from a Johnny Miller yeah. from the dubstep yeah. course, Snake Skin. It's a really nice track with a lo lo but nice bottom end. So you see here, the dynamic range is much wider, obviously. So that, that's giving you the, main, the dynamic range here. The larger, the longer is the bar here the more dynamic range you have. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's dynamic range, it's not RMS. RMS is here. That's your RMS here. And these are your peaks. The peaks always respond a lot quicker, basically. Yeah, Correlation, it's phase. It's your phase between left and right. If you go below zero, you've got some phase issue. The track here above zero and it's really wide, that means you've got no phase issue problem at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the phase issue that you may have, uh, on, in, in stereo might not be an issue, but in mono, could become an issue. And I know clubs, some clubs still play yeah. music in mono. Yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, and, and if you have issues, especially with bass and stuff in mono, that, that, then basically in mono the sound disappears. That's what happens. So that's why we are quite aware of uh, what we call mono compatibility. 
mm -hmm. you mix and master. Yeah, yeah. Although at the mastering, it's a bit too late, you know what I mean? It's got to be done uh, at the mix, really. Mm -hmm. So that, I hope I'm answering those yeah, questions at the so. moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. That's it. Yeah, do, do keep the questions coming in, though, guys. Yeah, please, guys. I mean, especially it's, that, it's last... Uh, L our last, last session of the one. year, so yeah, yeah. please bring them in, and uh, yeah, brilliant. So yeah, that's the one thing about, so so far that's what I, I wanted to highlight about uh, loudness, but like we said, there is a place, but what you need to be aware, there's few things I want to bring out your attention to, to loudness. So what I've done for a start, it's 20 pico example on the, for track, for club tracks. Um, few times, not many times, but few times it has happened to me, went to a club, get great tracks going on, you've got the peak, at the, you know, you've got the breakdown, you've got your high, you know, your, your loud part, you've got the breakdown and the launching back into the outro and mm -hmm. really, really going yeah, for yeah, it, you yeah. know, the big lift. And a couple of times it happened to me where the breakdown was louder than it really, really, really what was wow. supposed to be loud. Yeah, yeah. That's because it had been so badly mastered. Right. <laughs> you know, you're getting to a stage where the more you limit, the loud part are becoming effectively quieter. Mm -hmm. But because the, la the, the lowest level are not being limited, they're actually being brought up to a point where they're as loud. Yeah, so it's if compensating not louder, on that bit. Yeah, yeah, they are actually as loud as the mastered beat, as the really loud beat, mm -hmm. which basically, suddenly you're completely changing the intention of the track. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the breakdown is supposed to be a bit of a chill out vibe, mm -hmm. breaking it down, letting people, and then when you peak, you want it to really hit you in the face. Yeah, yeah. But then if it's too limited, it doesn't hit you in the face anymore. No. And that's creating for me a problem. So I wanted to kind of illustrate that with uh, a Mike Cogling track on the trance. Team. On the trance course, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so what I've done, I, I've done a really quick mastering really on it, like literally, uh, I've done hardly anything on it, but have a listen. So I've done a bit of EQ, I've just brightened up a little bit of the top end, 14, 6K. I've taken out a bit of muddiness at 135, and, and that's it really, and I've put a low cut really, and uh, just a bit of DSing on the I had that for me were a bit fierce as soon as I brought a bit of top end here, so check it out. So that's the EQ. With that, the EQ is a bit taller. So yeah, you're opening up right. with the EQ. You know, and it works nice, it works great. So now I'm going to bring the, the limiter into the picture, which is really what we want to demonstrate today. So there. Let's look at those two meters, guys, here. I'm going to bring that in, bring maybe that one here, and here we are. So, let's check on the loudness here on the, bo on the Doro meter, what it gives us. So you're getting, you're getting your IMS here, and that's kind of a normal level that is pretty much what's currently going on. I mean, obviously, I would really uh, advise you to uh, compare with commercially with this track that you really like, the reference. you know, yeah, and yeah. I would have it underneath, keep on coming back to it and try to match the kind of loudness. So, here I've got a normal level. Have a look here what's going on. Again, I've got, the IMS is much higher than the Nirvana that was here. You know, so you see the IMS is louder. That's my IMS here as well. Look at my dynamic range. I'm on 7 8, so this meter gives you a warning where it's if the dynamic range here metering is in the red, <coughs> that means you're probably not, you're too, yeah. you're, you're too much. But, you know, <coughs> they are quite conventional. So I'm not saying follow those metering completely to the letter, yeah. but if it sounds good to your ears, I mean, personally, I think it works at that loudness. It's loud, but if you look here at the attenuation on the limiting, you know, I'm kind of tickling it, it's moving, it's never staying all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's ma maximum of 4 dB of reduction. I think it's okay, I think yeah. it works. The dynamic range is on like 6 dB, is it? 8 dB. Yeah, yeah. And it, let's compare it with our VOB before. I'm as loud, I would say even a bit more. Yeah. I'm as loud, but to me, it works. It sounds okay. You can hear, you know, all the elements. It's you can hear clear. the element. It yeah. doesn't sound as distorted as the the BAB was. You know, it kind of works. You know, mm. so you've got to be aware of that. To me, that is a good level. It's workable. You know, I know that audiophile purist and 
I'm sure you know I can already hear some comments from people who are really into the sound quality. We say, nah, it's too squashed and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, the reality is that we live in a world where you need to compete, you know, with other track in a club, you know. Mm -hmm. And if it's quieter, if you're at home, and I completely agree for me, sound integrity. I'm at home. I turn it down and I boost uh, my volume. That's why you've got a. A volume on your iPod or on your hi-fi amp, you know, mm -hmm. turn it up and it's going to be better. If it's less compressed, it's going to sound better, mm -hmm. you know. It's going to be more powerful when you, you can actually, you know, for me the key, what I've noticed as well is that all the records, you put them really loud and they still sound good. Badly mastered tracks that are too loud nowadays, you can't really listen to them loud. I don't know if you've noticed. It's just I'm in a club, you know, some tracks are a bit just like... Yeah, it's just too bit, much. You yeah, know, it's a bit, yeah. uh, you know, so... I we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Like how it can make you feel, you know, uncomfortable, yeah. slightly tired. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and we've noticed, you know, we we're talking about it. It's like, have you, I don't know if you've ever tried, guys, but it's all psychoacoustic, how our ears and body works together and brains, you know. Try, for example, experiment that. Take completely the bass out of a track and you suddenly feel a bit uncomfortable, a bit edgy, almost anxious. Yeah, just waiting for something you to You know, happen. and when you bring the bass back and you're kind of like, Whew, ah, nice. It feels grounded, you know what I mean? It feels kind of like, okay, back to normal now. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it has sound that uh, has an effect on... Definitely. I don't want to go yeah. into the psychology of stuff, and I don't really know about it anyway. <laughs> anyway. But it's kind of like, it has a place, you know, yeah, so yeah, it, it, is, it is important. So let's take the same track now, but let's imagine that it was going through another limiter, and I'm going to really limit the... The shit out of it, if I can say that. You can uh, say that. And, uh, and let's see what it does, basically. And I'm going to show what I was talking to you about. Okay. So it's clearly a lot louder now. You're saying, I mean, this is not a good label. Yeah. You know, this is way too much. But what I want to show to you is that oh, yeah, you've got a breakdown. Loud. The breakdown is actually as loud, if not louder. Than the probably is loud, isn't it? And then let's go into the. Yeah. That is quieter. Yeah, yeah. You have now the part that is supposed to be louder, quieter, quieter. And I think that's really what I wanted to make people aware on this session today. Well, one of the key points that I wanted people aware mm -hmm. is that at some stage we're so obsessed with loudness that actually. If you were going for a really stupidly loud label in clubs and in radio, it would sound so much worse, mm. actually. And, you know, suddenly you're losing the whole intention. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, that's the first point that I wanted to bring out on this session. Do you have any questions? Yeah, we've got a couple of questions. Um, 3LL has asked, uh, can you explain the fundamentals that an amateur should take care of? So I guess if you're you know, just, just kind of making tracks, finishing tracks, but you want them to sound loud, but you know, you maybe not yeah, yeah, going yeah. fully into Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, that's, I think that, that, that would be that kind of... Yeah. There's a good way, I mean, we've got a video on that, so uh, I don't want to uh, start of repeating ourselves, I guess, about mm. what we're doing. <laughs> but uh, I, I, most limiters have this function. You see this link button here, and it's the same on a lot of limiters, where to be able, you know, the problem is, if I make it louder, it's going to sound like we've said before, it may appear to sound better. So have a listen here, I'm gonna do that. And because I'm doing that, it sounds louder, so I'm kind of like, yeah, it sounds better. But if you want to really be able to judge um, in, a, in the most effective manner, very objectively, it has this link button. So what it does is I'm making, I'm, I'm bringing down the threshold, but I'm bringing out the out ceiling as well, the output. So I'm actually always comparing at the same level. Mm -hmm. So I can really judge how the limiting is affecting the sound much more effectively, objectively. So have a listen here now. Same level, limiter or not. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm really hearing better what the limiter is doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Now you really hear. Exact reference. Exactly. So first thing, whatever you do, always compare at the same level as the original mix. Mm -hmm. That would be my, the key for me. Because otherwise, if it's louder, you can't tell if it's better. You can't, you just can't. Whereas here, I can tell. Is it better? I'm hearing what the limiter does, and it's kind of okay. And then after that, you bring back the output ceiling. So that's the way to use a limiter, in my okay. opinion. So that would be the fundamental. That's really good advice, yeah, definitely. That, you know, same level is the key. You cannot compare two tracks 
uh, a master and non master if they're not at the same level. Yeah. The, the yeah, master yeah, always yeah. going to sound just because your ears are going to trick you. Yeah. yeah. The, your, yeah. the ears are going to trick you. Um, so that would be the, the first thing to me. Cool. We've got another question uh, from Shem Assault, who's asked: Is mastering with headphones at all effective? Sorry. Mastering with headphones is it is it worthwhile? It, well, it can work. It mm. can work. Uh, I've got headphones at home because I'm. Uh, I've got. I can't always have as loud as I want to. There are some very good headphones. I mean, my, my favorite ones for the price, the best value in my opinion, is the Sennheiser HD 650. Mm -hmm. They're kind of the good hi-fi speakers. You can get them from 270 to 350, okay. depending where you buy them. So it's not a massive investment, and they're really, really good. Mm. They're really, really good. Uh, I wouldn't master only on headphones. Yeah, I guess that's the point, isn't that's it? That's the point, yeah. that's the point. I would check yeah. on headphones, yeah, gives yeah, you an, yeah. an extra yeah. reference, and a closer one. The thing with mastering, professional mastering room are extremely quiet, mm. like ridiculously quiet. And you, li you listen to it a relatively quite loud level in mastering. Not too loud, but a decent level. So you can hear everything, you know, any problems, that any clicks and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. The problem at home, you may not pick up on all that. Yeah. Little hiss, yeah, little yeah, click yeah. here and there, stuff like that. So headphone is brilliant mm. to be able to really yeah, kind of details, like, yeah. you know, listen to it under a microscope. Mm. But you need to listen in a, you know, car I think are great. Yeah. Listen to the place where you listen to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. Do your mastering in your studio and then listen to wherever you listen to a lot of music because you're going to know that place. You're going to know how it should sound. You've listened to so many tunes, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That you will suddenly, straight away, you'll be kind of like, yeah, it sounds in, in line with other tunes I'm listening to every day, mm -hmm. or it doesn't. Yeah. You know, and then you, know, you need that, you know, to go back. Yeah, so yeah, definitely, you know, don't, don't shy away from the headphones, but, mm -hmm. you know, always have, have the option. Um, <clears throat> Alex has asked, uh, when is it good to add reverb to your master, if at all? This is slightly different. But different, but yeah, no, no, let's, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, I've done it a couple of times on very, on kind of acoustic stuff. Okay. Like quite badly mixed, mm. uh, guitar, vocal, maybe a little whatever, <laughs> piano yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once I had a recording that was really badly recorded, but it was guitar and a lot of voices and the, the, it was a bit boxy and the, 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 the reverb helped to suddenly bring a bit of sense of liveness and, mm -hmm. and depth and, and it helps. On dance music, I've, I think I've done it only once and it was more kind of a slow tempo stuff. Right. On high tempo, I'd be very, I think it works better dry because the yeah. kick, you know, you don't want to start swamping the kick and stuff in reverb, mm -hmm. you know, so. It's muddy the whole thing. Yeah, thing, so it? I think for me it works better on, um, uh, on acoustic stuff and I've used it a couple of times to fix a fade where the fade was clipped. Okay. So I send it to the reverb and I use the length of the reverb to Right, okay. To smooth so out the fade. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can be a trick to do stuff like that, okay. but otherwise I tend to just not really use reverb. Um, okay, we've got a couple of uh, people saying that the, the mouse cursor might be a bit small. I think we can, we can make that bigger, can't we? I think There's we can. There's a way can. to do that, I'm sure. I think we can do that. Um, okay. And in the nope. meantime... In the meantime as well, we've got a question from Evan, uh, Evan Grimshaw, who's asked um, about, um, in terms of gain reduction, yep. what is the amount, um, the amount of gain reduction when the music kind of loses its dynamics? <laughs> uh, I would say it depends, depends on the track. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. I, I would say it depends on the track. Uh, when, you don't, when, when you start not having the, the transient, when the transients have lost too much, mm -hmm. you've already, that for me, you've gone a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. You know. <coughs> um, it's also just using your ears, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. It's going to depend on the style, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I mean, like we've looked at all those dynamic range, you know, tools, I think, 9 dB, a, a dynamic range of 9 dB. Mm -hmm. Feels, seems to feel right, but yeah. it's an average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't go, I can't say, yeah, no, everything should be, no, it, mm. it, it depends on the music, okay. you know. It's a ni nice number to go on though, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose if we need to put a number, yeah. but I, I, I'm sure that, you know, in a few days' time, we'll have a lot of comments who will say, yeah. you're, you're, you're talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good one. Uh, also, Evan, again, has asked, um, 
If, he, if he's only using Logic plugins, uh, where can he monitor any inter-sample distortion? Ah, okay. We, I, I wanted to go into that. Perfect. That, that Perfect. was the next subject that I wanted Thank to bring you, on. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're providing a lovely link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Logic hasn't got an inter-sample, as far as I know, okay. uh, plug, uh, plugin. Yeah. But there are a lot of free plugins out there. Steelwell Audio are doing one. I okay. forgot the name, but it's on the mastering, and I'd be happy to, to, to type yeah, it in, guys. Yeah, we'll get that in the comments. You know, I'll get well. that. But uh, check it out, this one. Uh, Apple have done one. Okay. But we're going to go into that. I wanted to touch on the mastering for iTunes. Okay, stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, SSL have a free plugin. Check it out, guys. It's that one. It's called Exism. And it shows here, you see those... Uh, an inter-sampling meter. It's free. Okay. You cool. get it from the SSL website. Mm -hmm. And we can go a little bit touching on what is inter sampling. Yeah, I think, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, um, it might be good for some of the other guys. Let's go a little bit about yeah. theory, although I'm not uh, an expert, but I, I know a little bit about why you should be aware of it, at mm -hmm. least. What you've got to be aware, guys, is that any time you make a change to a digital audio file, let's say if I have a, a 48K uh, sample rate audio file that I've mastered really loud, let's say at it's eating minus 0 0.1. So I've got this track here. So here you see, no inter sampling. I'm good. So I would say it's a good mastering. So that's, a, that's quite a decent mastering. Great plugin as well. You see it gives you the beat. That's the number of beat depth that you're using. Yeah. So again, it's a good tool. Yeah, it's a good, good, cool, cool plugin for free. Uh, ah, here, you see, I'm getting one. Just one that, that, that came out. Mm -hmm. uh, with inter so what happens? Where was I? Yeah, inter sampling. What happens to digital audio is that it's affect every time you make a quite a big important change to a digital audio file, it's gonna affect the volume okay. of the file. And that's what inter sampling metering are important for. So I've got this track, I've mastered it at 0 0.1, and it's at 48, and I need to make a CD for it, so I'm gonna turn it into a 44.1. Mm -hmm. Chances are that when, by the time I've made the conversion from 48 to 41, I'm starting to go over zero. Okay. That's one thing that you need to be aware of. The same happens when you turn into an MP3. And that's why those inter-sample plugins are very important. Okay. It's to have an idea of what's going to happen. So you're when kind of pre, you know, looking, looking yeah, ahead. Exactly. Right. Okay, cool. exactly. Okay. Another thing that happens that people need to be aware of is that Cheaper, cheaper converters, digital to analog converters, such as the one that you find on a cheap hi-fi system, on an iPod probably, mm. they probably don't have the best converters, let's face it. Yeah, you yeah, know, they yeah. don't have the, uh, the top gear that we have yeah. in a studio. Uh, those have a limited dynamic range. And often, they have a dynamic range smaller than what we have when you work here mm -hmm. in digital yeah, audio. Yeah. What it means is that the stuff, again, or any peaks are going to go over zero and are going to start distorting. Mm -hmm. So again, that means that's the kind of fierce and not pleasant sound that you're going to get. So that's why those inter sample are trying to preempt what's going to happen in those cheap converters when you convert into MP3, when you convert from 48 to 41. Mm -hmm. That's why you have an inter sample meter. Okay. Yeah. And so, for example, on that one, when you saw that, that little blip there, What's the next stage? I would turn it down okay. a little bit. Cool. So going back to what we were saying, there's two things you could do. I hope you're seeing the, the cursor better, guys. I yeah, I, I think it looks a bit cool. bigger, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so there's two ways you do that. You could do it here, output selling, turn it down. Now, the problem is by doing that, I'm still limiting as much as I used before. So my, my, my take would be kind of like, guys, there's no point turning that. Bring that up a little bit and get a bit more dynamic range going on, you know, bring back some dynamic range. It's an, it's an opportunity to bring back some dynamic range. And there, here, according to this meter, we, meter we're in the orange, it seems happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not getting inter sample anymore. There's a lot of uh, inter sampling metering as well. Uh, the Sonox limiter has it, the Xenox. Xenon limiter from PSP, great limiter by the way, uh, has an inter sampling limiter. Limiters that well. come with, come yeah. with it, right? Okay, uh, cool. uh, that, that kind of inter sampling yeah, metering. Yeah. So I hope that has answered the. Yeah, the, I think that's, that's a really good um, clearing up for you guys. Um, 
Also, Alex has, has asked again, uh, can you talk about uh, multiband limiting versus regular limiting? Ah, uh, I'm not a big fan of multiband limiter myself, but I'm not a big fan of multiband in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that, you know, if you've got a really well-balanced mix, your compressor is going to react to the whole thing as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the multiband limiters are starting to touch into areas of EQ as well, because you can start shaping the sound by, with bands. Mm -hmm. But they have a place, yeah, no, they are certainly a place. If a mix isn't good enough, then you can start fixing certain things. Okay. Like, okay. you know, you can limit maybe the kick drum differently than the snare, mm -hmm. and you can start limiting differently. Yeah, so yeah. It, has, it has its place. And actually, I think that when it comes to loudness, you probably, if that loudness is, the, is your thing and you want to get loudness and you're struggling to get it with a, a uniband, you probably will get a bit more loudness of, out of a multiband. Okay. Purely because you can start adjusting what is getting in the way to get it loud. Mm -hmm. The main thing that gets in the way of getting loud is the bass. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we've We've touched on it on yeah, the la last mastering so, yeah. session we've done yeah, with yeah. Waves. You've noticed on the dubstep tracks, such as this one, for example. Let's do that. I'm going to bring it to that part here. And now I'm going to bring the limiting stuff on it. Yeah. You see this one? Again, look, I've gone quite crazy up. Uh, according to that meter, I'm probably slightly, you know, I'm tiny cringe I'm using it. But as I need to have the mix, it doesn't say that it's that loud because it's not that loud. If I'm checking, I mean, it is actually because of the bass, it's the bass, you know. And what's going to happen with the bass is that the more you bring the limiter, you hear the bass distorting. It's always going to be the first one to suffer is the bass. So, one way to get to get uh, louder is to actually try getting less bass. Okay. If you bring down the bass, you can get a louder master. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically the bottom line. So yeah, line. it might be worth going back into the mix, you know. Yeah, or, or even decide say, you know, the problem for me is that a lot of mixes at the moment, I've noticed to in order to gain loudness, a lot of people, I think personally, at the mom at the moment, music in general, and not only electronic yeah, yeah. music in general has less bottom and warmth, <laughs> really nice subby mm -hmm. than in the 90s. Okay. For me in the 90s, I don't know, there was the, some of the track like drum and bass, hip hop, uh, more low tempo, trip hop, whatever you want to mm. call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is, uh, had more bass, had a, a warmer, a nicer bottom end because you, we didn't have to master as loud. Mm. And in order to get louder masters now, I think people are starting to sacrifice Cutting the bass back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In okay, order to get louder. Yeah. And for me, I'm losing that kind of really nice big bass, and I'm a big fan of that, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know? uh, another question from uh, 3LL, who's asked, um, what do you think of mastering templates? Uh, Are these bloody useless? Yes. Yes, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you do, you know, it's worth mentioning, you know, if you, if you do want to get, you know, a real... Um, comprehensive guide to mastering, um, you know, and, and you want to learn a lot more about it, which, which it does sound like you do, um, then check out the, the mastering course that we offer, developed by JC. Yeah, and with Doug, yeah. With, with Doug, Doug as well. Master, with the experience mastering engineer. So, you know, rather than look at, you know, templates like you've mentioned, you know, learn to do it professionally yourself, you know, you know get those skills and, yeah, and get your yeah. tracks to that level. And start learning all the steps, you know, so first you become aware of all those things. Because they're important to know for your, the quality of your master. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you're sending, let's say you're sending a CD, you're doing a proper CD release, you're sending to the manufacturer to press the CD. If you don't deliver a, a good CD master with errors, you're, you, you know, you're yeah. stuck. You know, yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be sent to you saying, I can't, I can't press that. Yeah. So it's important. So the first two weeks of the mastering course, we're getting a lot in, of theory, becoming aware of all the stuff. And then you learn to EQ compress, limit, blah, 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 and more advanced techniques afterwards. Mm -hmm. Parallel compression and, and multiband and, yeah, yeah. and mid-side and all that kind of stuff and, and f until your, you know, your final product. So for me, it's better to learn all those issues than use a template because a template may work on a track, but then it may not work. Mm -hmm. And you, without you really realizing it. Yeah, so I'd be, I'd, be wary, I'd be wary of templates, guys. Okay, cool. Uh, that's quite a good question from Shemasol who said, uh, do you think the loudness war will ever end? 
No. <laughs> it's been going yeah. on for since f 50 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. You know, for over 50 years. I don't, I don't think it will <clears throat> because it's... You know, it, what's funny is that we, I, I was quite, for the, for the course, we've interviewed a lot of people and producers and obviously producers are the ones who are more conscious about it. And most of the time they're kind of like, yeah, I don't want to fuck on my mix, you know, too yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, mastering engineer obviously are the ones that are, are, have the strongest views on the loudness mm -hmm. because they really hear, mm. uh, you know, how you deteriorate. You know, it's their they, job to do it's so, their job, right? you know, yeah. and, and it's their job is to really, has always been over the years, to, to maintain the highest quality. Mm -hmm. they've, got, they've developed these amazing listening abilities. Mm. So as soon as you put a limiter on it, they, they really hear it more yeah, than yeah, anybody yeah. else, I guess, yeah. you know. But the pressure, funny enough, often comes from the, more the artists than the labels. Okay. It's not so much the labels. It's not the A&R who's going to say your mix is too quiet. Yeah, yeah. The you artist know? wants it to be loud and full. And it's the artist, as soon as they go home. And even when you mix, when I mix and I give the mix to the artist, just as, the, as a yeah, listening yeah. thing, I put, the car with it on, I, yeah. I put a limit on. Because <laughs> I know that they're going to listen to it against commercially with this track. Yeah, yeah. And if it's quieter, they're going to come to me and say, Have a go at you. Mix is shit, it's quieter. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. <laughs> but it's not all about loudness. You know, no. listen to the mix. Yeah. Right. But, uh, the, so yeah, it, I don't think it will end because of that. Mm. Uh, what it needs to, it needs to back off a little bit for me in terms of the loudness and certainly not try to get any louder than we do because mm. otherwise... And don't sacrifice other, other elements. No, exactly. Loudness. If you, you can't push the tracks louder because you've got this really amazing bass in it, well, don't push it. Yeah. And we'll just listen to it. Um, a bit louder. We'll crank it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, Lee Hawkins has asked, between the EQ and the final limiting stage, is there any advantage to adding minor compression yeah. to apply some glue to the mix? Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Again, in, if loudness is your thing, I, I believe that you should go in stages. Mm -hmm. So I would EQ, try to get really my, the tonal balance the best as I can, yeah. and that's going to be the first thing. Usually I'm going to start with EQ. I may bring a compressor first if the mix is all over the place. There's so much dynamic range that are wrong mm. and a lot of resonance. I might try to glue it a little bit before I tackle the thing with EQ. But otherwise, I would have my compressor afterwards. Yeah. And then, yes, I would exactly use my compressor for that, to, to glue a little bit if needs be, but also to start the process of getting a little bit more level. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah. the truth. And then a multiband compressor actually might be good as well for that. So you're doing stages, a little bit up there, a little bit there, and a little bit at the li limiting. You're better doing that than do everything with your limiter. You know, limiter of after 3 dB of gain reduction, they usually don't sound good at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so leave it, leave it yeah. to the end, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so st stage by stage, increase your gain, your loudness. Yeah, I mean, the, the big let's theory, has, I think he's asked the kind of similar thing, really, like the kind of chain when it comes to mastering. It's kind of, you know, yeah. what we've just said. Well, that's just what I've discussed. Well. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Evan said an hour is not enough for the topic. No, I know we could <laughs> go on forever. Yeah, we could do. Guys. I mean, if you, you know, Evan, you, you do seem to be, um, you know, kind of really into to the kind of mastering stuff and definitely check out the rest of the Friday forums that we've done. Um, all archived on the YouTube channel. There's there's quite a few, uh, me and JC go through mastering stuff and the mixing stages and also, um, We've probably got a couple of, of tutorials on the YouTube channel and as I've said, definitely check out the course as well in full. Um, Okay, so K100 Music has said, uh, if you have isotope ozone, um, mm -hmm. there would be, would there be any chance to do a quick run through yeah. of how you would go yeah, through mastering? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we're starting a mastering course in the college in January, actually. Okay. The kind of the online version, but, but in, in, here extended in house, yeah. here in house and, and extended as well. Okay. And we've introduced ozone for that. Mm -hmm. So in January, I'll have ozone. So by the time I get my head into it, I'll, uh, I'll do an FFL on it, yeah. Wicked, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, yeah, next year cool. um, we'll get into that, definitely. Cool. definitely. Um, so we are reaching the end of time, guys. Uh, just run through a couple of final questions. Um, Evan again has asked, uh, in terms of EQ and dynamics, uh, what is the difference between CD, iTunes and vinyl cool. mastering? Cool, yeah. again, perfect timing, perfect link. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to link us to uh, master, mastering for iTunes. Yeah. Which yeah, is basically yeah, yeah. based on exactly what I've talked to you about, about this entire sampling and what's going on when you're turning a file from a nice wave, 24 bit, 48, 41, whatever, into an MP3. You're gaining volume, you're getting some problems. So Apple have done 
the thing. They've got three plugins that you can download, and it's called the Round Trip plugin. And check it out here. It's got a lot of different things here. You can audition, you can view the pick, and it also has a listening test into which you can select a source uh, and, 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 and almost like kind of like, it's like a test almost. It's a test that you can make to train your ears. Okay. So you can load the track and try to guess, is it the MP3 version? Is it the wave? Is it the blah, blah, blah? So it's kind of a cool thing to yeah, have. Yeah. And you know, if you guys are into mastering, actually, maybe it's a good way to start training your ears and mm -hmm. start to try to analyze. And I think to start with headphones, actually, good headphones can be a good thing because you can really listen closely for those kind of artifacts that happened. Um, but what's interesting about the audition, it's something that Sonox have done as well. It's a plugin that allows you to listen how it's going to sound once it's an MP3. Okay. You know what Very I mean? Cool. So it's yeah, almost yeah. like an encoding live, if you yeah, like. Yeah, so yeah. you can tell what's going to happen. Really In this case, it does it for iTunes Plus. iTunes Plus is the new format, which is mastered for iTunes. Basically, what they've done is their advice is to only turn MP3 from 24-bit file. But to be honest, I think it's a bit of a, because you should always do that. Yeah. There's no reason why you should do MP3 from 16 bits. You know, 16 bits is only for CD. So work for 24, mm. do an MP3. And also it's now, the iTunes Plus is 256 KB in terms of bandwidth, which to be honest, I think before the problem with Apple iTunes was that it was sounding rubbish because it was 128. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me it's kind of like, well, it was about time that something was done about yeah, it. Yeah, so this yeah. whole mastered for iTunes, there's a, if you can be bothered, read the big PDF about it. There, there are few for me, they, I'm a bit uh, cynical about it, purely because it's ob obvious stuff almost, yeah. you know? Um, but what's interesting is this level thing that happens. I was saying to you guys before, you've got a, a mix really loud, uh, well, not, really, not picking of a zero, but really loud master, and let's take this master here, the one I've done here, I'm going to hide that, and you know, my exism meter, happy, no intersampling according to him. According to that, obviously, I've got a very limited dynamic range, but hey, if I don't get any peaks, I'm cool with that. Here, I've got a really loud level. It's a loud master, that one, no doubt, you know. But now, if I bring the round trip plugin, you see what's going to happen. It tells me, look at my peaks here. Here I'm fine, but here, plus 0 0.3, 0 0.3, once it's been encoded. You see here, 0 0.8, it even goes higher. So it tells you here, I'm stopping the track. It tells you here from the meter, as you can see, the source sample peak is at minus 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And encoded, it, you can see it's minus uh, 0 0.2. It tells you that once I've encoded it is in AAC at so 256, it, go it goes above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, for me, this is where intersampling is important because I don't want that. Mm. You know, I'm all for loudness. I mean, I'm all. I understand the place of loudness. Yeah, yeah. Because don't get me wrong, I still think that, you know, go a bit quieter, turn up your volume. I love to listen to music loud, but it's got to sound good mm. so you know so I'm all good uh, I'm all for that but that I, do, I wouldn't want to have you know because if you're picking here well now it's gonna sound a bit rubbish inevitably you know so that's why this whole intersampling is all about is to predict what's happening when you're starting to turn it into an mp3 or an AAC and here on this meter you can only here I'm listening to the source so I'm listening to how it is as a wave if I click here and listen to it, now it's the AAC version. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's yeah. really, really cool, it's free, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sony do one, a better one, probably, and more complex, but you know, it costs a bit of money. And what you can do is customize it. So check it out. You can check here, here, variable bitrate, average bitrate. So you could, for example, let's have a listen how it's gonna sound at 128 instead. So you see, I mean, in terms of, yeah, a bit more. It's interesting that now that I'm encoding at 128, which is a lower bandwidth, a lower, a lower quality, I'm getting more peaks. 
it's distorting more. Mm -hmm. So basically, the more you compress your file into a lower quality, the more the inter sampling the worse it's getting. So question is, what do you do here? Well, what do you do here is you take your limiter and back off. You know what I mean? Just back off yeah. until That's the source, but the encoded this seems to be okay. No. It's the source, but I, yeah, again. So, and basically you adjust your master until it's done mm. to do your, and then at least you know that, okay, we may have a, a loud master, we may have uh, completely got rid of all the peaks and dynamic, but at least you're gonna make sure that you get something that doesn't go in the, in the red, basically. Mm. So when you listen on your iPod, it's still, no, Still you know, good, yeah. Yeah. So that's the whole that's interesting really thing interesting. and mastering for high tune kind of vibe. The idea goes beyond, you know, a lot of people like Rick Rubin, who's, you know, I really admire uh, as, a, as, a, as a guy, but as a producer, he's the guy responsible for Metallica, Death Magnetic, and all his records are bloody loud, mm. are really, really, really loud. And he's claimed on the last Red Chili Peppers that they did EQ differently for the MP3 version. So what you could do here is, now that I'm listening in an encoded version, I do a special EQ for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally have to say, I don't believe in that. Mm. For me, it's about make it sound as good as possible. You know, the, the, what's going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it sound as good as possible as a WAV, and then the, 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 the MP3 or AAC will be what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't see how you can EQ... I mean, the problem with mp3 AAC format or any compression of data like that is that you're losing stuff and you're creating a bit of phase problem. I don't think you can get it back by EQing. Mm. You know, for me, the key is that hopefully with internet being faster, with computer being more powerful, everything, at some stage we won't have to have mp3. Yeah, yeah, that's Let's what have I a WAV well, yeah. 24 yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? As a DJ, I'm sure you see it as well. Yeah, you know? I mean, I only play WAVs, you know. You know, and it, because it sounds better. Yeah. In a club, yeah. it sounds better. It sounds, you know, playing it, playing an MP3 in a club, I mean, playing 128 just... just it's a no-go, it's a no-go, you know what I mean? And you, because you notice what happens to it. Yeah. And yeah. imagine that loud on a big system. It's going to distort. It's not going to be pleasant, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So I, think, that, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. Yeah, for me, that, that, that it, I mean, like you said, we can go on about it, we can talk a lot more. I just wanted to try to give you guys a, a kind of balanced view about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's not ideal, this loud, this, far from it, this war of loudness. If we could back it up, I would, personally, but I can't because otherwise I get people say to me, oh, your mixes are quieter. <laughs> Effectively, what they're saying is, your mixes are a bit cheater. So I don't want that to happen, so I make sure that make it's sure as loud, loud as everybody yeah, else. Yeah. So I, I, I play the game of, yeah. uh, of, well, of loudness, you know, but um, at least be aware of certain things mm -hmm. that at least are not going to completely destroy your well, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's great advice and, um, you know, this, as, as we've said before, this session is going to be archived pretty much instantly. Uh, so it's probably a lot to take in, but, you know, you can, can watch again. Um, and, uh, yeah, and we'll go in, you know, we, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go yeah. back in if you put question, I, I'll try to answer before Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> cool. And, yeah, we'll be back uh, live. I think it's three weeks, I think. Um, and as I said, in the meantime, we will have a few old sessions um, going up. Um, on the Facebook and you know as, as ever they're all going to be archived on the YouTube so um, yeah stay locked into the channel make sure you subscribe and um, we'll see you in the new year thanks for watching thanks for watching guys cheers bye bye